excited about the annual meeting um, and uh, to be back here at ASCO. Our development program continues to expand and some of the data that we've been able to generate is here and uh, highlighted at the annual meeting. Um, I think one of my favorite uh, publications that will be presented at the annual meeting is Dr. Bird's uh, poster and poster discussion on the Resonate study in which we have four years of follow-up. This was our first phase three study with Improvica, so it's a very important study to the, pro uh, to the program. Um, and today we have four years of follow-up on this international phase three study that enrolled 391 patients with CLL that had relapsed after prior treatment. Many of the patients had very high risk disease. The long-term data um, is, I think, impressive in many ways. Um, it shows this distinct difference in terms of how patients with high risk factors uh, seem to hold their response and their remission with ibrutinib. Specifically, those patients with deletion 11Q or an unmutated immunoglobulin heavy chain gene, which is our traditional poor prognostic factors uh, with other therapies, did not seem to be predictive for adverse outcomes with ibrutinib. Um, so, in addition to the efficacy data, uh, we actually see some tremendous safety data over the, over the long term. Um, so within the study, we have the majority of patients are still taking drug for at least three years, uh, three years and beyond, with up to 53 months of follow-up, um, which speaks to the tolerability of the drug over the long term, but also the efficacy in terms of these patients not progressing from their disease. Um, our 17P deletion cohort is still doing quite well in that study, um, with let about half the patients being progression-free at this time of the analysis. Uh, so in addition to the Resonate study, we also have a really nice look at what happens when um, patients receive ibrutinib compared to a standard chemotherapeutic called chlorambicil. Um, in that study, which is the Resonate 2 study, uh, scientists have looked at the immune cell levels in the peripheral blood uh, serially over time. And what they found was a distinct difference from chemotherapy, where chemotherapy seems to kill many cells and in addition to the cancer cells. Ibrutinib actually targets specifically the cancer cells by preserving many of the normal immune cells um, in the system. And so it speaks to you know where we're moving with targeted therapy and one of the features here at ASCO is moving away from chemotherapy. And by doing that, you may be able to spare some normal cells, um, but still get the efficacy, in this case, maybe even enhanced efficacy that you do over those standard chemotherapeutic regimens. We also have two trials in progress posters that are being presented. Um, the first one is Perspective, and so we're really excited about this. It's a frontline follicular lymphoma study um, where we're combining with rituximab and looking to see how we can change potentially the treatment of patients with frontline follicular lymphoma, in which the standard now um, is largely chemotherapeutic based, but also single agent rituximab is used in many patients. Uh, we also have a phase three study, and again, in the frontline setting in chronic graft versus host disease. Um, so that phase three study will look at I ibrutinib on top of standard steroids for chronic graft versus host disease in newly diagnosed patients. Um, and we just have launched that international study as well, and so we're really looking forward to making more progress on that.